Blackmagic do include their own capture program, which is called Media Express, which is this program. Now, I have to admit, I don't use that. I would prefer to capture in EDIUS. There's only two reasons why I might actually use this program. One is, if I'm not seeing a picture in EDIUS, it's a good way of double checking. Sometimes on some computers, some of the gizmos just don't work. In particular, some of the USB 3 gizmos that Blackmagic do have been very picky about which computers they work on. And we've actually found they might capture in Media Express when they wouldn't capture in an editing program on a machine that's a bit dodgy. If we're getting a picture in Media Express, at least we know something's working, even if it's not working in, say, EDIUS. So I might just use it as a checking program. So open it up. Under Device, you should see whatever your gizmo is. In this case, it's the 4D Extreme. Then you come to Edit and Preferences. And you can see here, this is where you set what signal's coming in. Project Video Format. In my case, 1080-50i. Now you see I'm not seeing anything there, but there's a very good reason for it. So I've set 1080-50i, then you choose the format. Well, this is the major reason why I would always use EDIUS in preference to Media Express. Because you've got Motion JPEG, which is a compressed format, so it can cope with it on a regular drive, and that's okay, but it's not brilliant. It's not nearly as good as Canopus HQ, so I find that a little bit naff. All the others are variations of uncompressed, and uncompressed takes up bucket loads of space and you'll probably have to raid some drives together to do it. So that's the major reason why I don't do it. Unless I've got a fancy raid, it's motion JPEG, which isn't nearly as good as Canopus. And obviously you've got things here for where the stuff's going, where you capture still frames to, and everything else. But that's the major one. Set that up and then choose a format. Then if you want to capture, you've got to come down to these three tabs and click log and capture. And then if you're lucky, you see a picture. Hello. So I'm ready to capture. You click on the capture button and it starts capturing. Yeah, yeah, I've captured a piece of video. The other useful program that you'll find in the black magic list of stuff is disk speed test, which will basically test your disk and see what it can actually cope with. Click on the little cog in the middle, choose the drive you want to test. So in my case, I'm going to test my three terabyte drive and click start. But there you are, after doing a bit of work it's actually saying what this drive can cope with. And this is just a regular three terabyte SATA drive. It'll just carry on and on and on forever. It'll just do it again and again and again. So at some point you stop it after you've got some results. But you can see here it reckons that I can capture 10 bit YUV422, which is an uncompressed format, all the way up to 24 frames a second. And I could do 50i on it, which is actually not bad for a regular drive, but I can't do anything else. I can only do standard definition 10-bit and only do standard definition 12-bit. It's quite a nice program, quite good for testing your drives out. If you're having problems capturing and it's dropping frames, run this up, see what this thinks your computer can cope with.